In this tutorial, we're going to see which kind of index performs best and why. We'll see which are the common pitfalls when using indexes on multiple columns and we'll work on some benchmarks to check the actual performance in numbers. A composite index is also known as a multi-column index. Composite indexes are often not very well understood. Common mistakes are to index many or all the columns separately or to index columns in the wrong order. The first common mistake has a distinctive signature, as we see here. This kind of indexes can be many orders of magnitude slower than truly optimal indexes. Consider for example a query looking for cities in a given country with a minimum population for the city. Here we can use an index on the country code column to look for cities with the country code set to DU and we can use another index on the population column to look for cities with a population greater than 1 million. However, if we make queries using multiple filtering conditions, then individual indexes on lots of columns won't help MySQL improve performance for most queries. MySQL can cope a little with such poorly indexed table by using a strategy known as index merge, which allows a query to make limited use of multiple indexes. Therefore, for this case, it's best to combine it into one index that includes both columns. When the server intersects indexes, usually for end query condition, it means that we need a single index with all relevant columns and not multiple indexes that have to be combined at runtime. Still, how we do this is important. The country code uses an equal reference, whereas the population is a range search. In MySQL, once a column in an index is used for range search or for sorting, no more other columns in the index can be used anymore except for covering index. Therefore, for this query example, we need to add the country code column before the population column in order to use the index for both conditions. Furthermore, the index can also be used to sort the results using the population value. On the other hand, if we need to add several columns that all are used for the equality conditions, then there are two things we must consider. Which columns are most often used and how well does the column filter the data? When there are multiple columns in an index, MySQL will use only the left prefix of the index. For example, if we have an index on column A, B and C, then we can only use the index to filter on column B if we also filter on column A and that must be an equality condition. We can't use the index to filter on column B directly, so we need to choose the order carefully. In some cases, it can be necessary to add more than one index for the same columns, where the column order differ between the indexes. These are called redundant indexes and we'll check when it makes sense to add them in the next section. The second thing we should consider regarding the order of multi-column indexes is how well does the column filter the data. Normally, we should add the most selective column first. In short, the more distinct values a column has, the more selective the column is. By adding the most selective column first, we will narrow down more quickly the number of rows. Now, it's time to see some examples and verify ourselves how indexing affects the performance. We want to test what is the response time for an index on two columns, that is a composite index versus two individual indexes on the same two columns. We'll use a table that looks like this. Basically, we store some contact information about the users. Then, we want to query this table using the name and the state ID columns. But first, we need to create and populate this table. For this, we'll use a small Python script which will insert the given number of rows in the table, in this case, 1 million rows. Please note that we'll apply this static insert clause. However, to make things more interesting, we'll increment the values for name and state ID columns. Furthermore, we want to add indexes on these columns and it wouldn't make any sense to create an index on static values. Now, 
let's execute the populate script. Switch to Python in MySQL shell and copy paste the script. And now we wait for it to insert 1 million rows. We are ready now to execute the benchmark tests. We'll execute this query 300 times and we want to measure how many queries were executed per second and the total time. We'll do this for the case with no index, individual indexes and composite index. To execute the query 300 times, we'll use again a Python script that looks like this. Copy paste. And we write the results in the table. However, if we execute the query with explain analyze, we find out that MySQL has no choice but to do a full scan. And that's why the queries are so slow. The second test is for individual indexes. First, we'll add one individual index on name column and one individual index on state ID column. Then, we'll run analyze table just to make sure that statistics are on point. Execute the benchmark test again and we see that is much faster now. If we make use of explain analyze, we see that MySQL has chosen to intersect the indexes and then filter the results using the two conditions. However, at the first step, the query plan underestimates the number of rows returned. This might cause MySQL to not choose the best plan. So now, we want to replace the two individual indexes with a composite index. Therefore, we drop the two current indexes and then add a multi-column one. We execute the Python script again and we note the results. Again, if we check the internal execution of the query, we see that MySQL has chosen a simple index lookup for the query and the number of rows are correctly estimated. In most cases, we don't really want redundant indexes. To avoid them, we should extend already existing indexes rather than adding new ones. Still, there are some times when we actually need redundant indexes for performance reasons, since extending an existing index might make it much larger and reduce performance for some kind of queries. First, redundant indexes are a bit different from duplicate indexes. If there is an index on AB, then another index on A would be redundant because it is a prefix of the first index. Essentially, the index on AB is at the same time an index on A. However, an index on BA would not be redundant and neither would be an index on B only, because B is not a leftmost prefix of AB. Furthermore, indexes of different types 
such as hashes or full text indexes, are not redundant to B3 indexes, no matter what columns they cover. Let's see an example where we benchmark the adoption of redundant indexes. First, we'll drop the current secondary index. Then, we will refer to the next two queries as Q1 and Q2. The first one retrieves the number of rows for a state ID and the second retrieves several columns instead of just counting the rows. If we look at these queries, then we might conclude that would be useful to define an index on the state ID column. Otherwise, MySQL will do a full scan, which is quite slow, so an index might be really beneficial. However, an even better index that would benefit both queries would be one on all three columns. In this case, query 1 will still use the index, but query 2 should perform much better because it has all necessary columns in the index and it won't need to access the table at all. Still, one question would be if the first query should perform better using only the first index, or should we keep both indexes? We'll try to answer these questions in this section. For the benchmarks, we will execute the query without index, with single column index, with multi column index, and with both indexes. For this, we'll use a Python script to execute the query 300 times for Q1 and 300 times for Q2. For each execution, we take note of how many queries are executed per second. To not bore you, I run the test by myself and here I just took note of the results. However, benchmarks are available in the description if you want to play with different configurations. After running the tests, it looks like Q1 is a bit faster, using only the index on state ID column. However, query Q2 is faster using the index on all three columns. So, should we keep both indexes? If we really care about making both queries as fast as they can be, we should leave both indexes, even though the single column index is redundant. Of course, the drawback of having two indexes is the maintenance cost. This table shows how long it takes to insert 30,000 rows into the table. As you can see, inserting new rows into a table with more indexes is slower. This is true in general. Adding new indexes might have an impact for insert, update and delete operations, especially if a new index causes you to hit a memory limit. Here, we didn't hit the memory limit for 30,000 rows and that's why the values are pretty close. With even more rows inserted, the gap between the response times will grow larger. Therefore, in the end, it really depends on how frequently we execute these queries compared to the number of times we update the table. If we decide that redundant indexes bring no benefit, the solution is simply to drop them. First, we need to identify them. We can write various complicated queries against the information schema tables, but there is a much simpler technique. This view from the sys schema can be used to find redundant indexes. Here we see that index 2, which includes state ID, city and address columns, is the dominant index, while the index 1, which includes only the state ID column, is a redundant index. But when do these indexes usually appear? This kind of useless indexes usually appear when someone might add a new index on AB instead of extending an existing index on A. Another way this could happen is by changing the index to cover A and ID, where the ID column is the primary key, so it's already included. This applies for InnoDB storage engine, which is the default one and the most used. Still, 
we should be careful when determining which indexes are candidates for dropping or extending. Recall that in InnoDB, an index on column A is really equivalent to an index on A and ID, because the primary key is appended to a secondary index leaf node. If you have a query such as where A is equal to 5 ordered by ID, the index will be really helpful for this query. But if you extend the index to AB, then it really becomes AB and ID, and in this case, the query will begin to use a file sort for the order by portion of the query. In this section, we learn about common mistakes of composite indexes that are to index many or all the columns separately or to index the columns in the wrong order. We've seen which are the use cases that make a redundant index useful and when to avoid it. Finally, it's very important to be able to reason through how indexes work and to choose them based on that understanding and not on rules of thumb.